Oh, goodness me, we had the uh, gremlins popping in there. Where we, um, the... <laughs> hey, look, it's one thing to be excited, but he, see how excited this guy is? <laughs> oh, he's, he, he's jumped the queue. He's already got What's in there without us even giving him an he's opportunity. To technology. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's bring the man on. And this is why he's a fan, fra fan favourite. Um, welcome, Dobra Vecher, Dobro Dosi, and good evening. How are you, Ivan, Ivan Kelava? Dobra Vecher. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you, Ivan? Now, mate, your, your yes. English, I've been told, is you're, you're like a native. So we will speak English, but, you know, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. and if we do, we'll try and translate that for the benefit yeah. of um, the millions of millions, not thousands, the millions of Melbourne Victory supporters tuning in. Firstly, good evening and thanks for joining us. How are you? Good evening. Once again, thank you for having me. Pretty excited to be with you guys and uh, can't wait to chat with you a bit. Uh, now, it's mate. Uh, firstly, firstly, let's let's talk about your career um, and how you started. And, and um, now you were born in Zagreb, is that right? So you started off at the Dinamo Zagreb Youth School, or was it before Dinamo Zagreb Youth School you started playing elsewhere? Yeah, I was like the youngest kid uh, in my street, uh, so obviously I wanted to play with the older boys, my brothers, and everything. So they put me on a goal. And then I started to play for my school and like on my first tournament, some scouts from Dinamo Zagreb, they saw me, they invited me for trials and that's how my journey journey began. Which, wanna... which quart of Zagreb was that? Uh, I was, uh, uh, I'm from Gračani. Gračani, that's uh -huh. like a uh, little bit below Sljeme, so it's uh -huh. pretty green, nice area and also, your last three guests live uh, pretty close to, to my family house. So, yeah, it's, there you go. Yeah, so you, I had like maybe 10, 15 minutes drive to uh, study on Maximir, and yeah. yeah, it was pretty pretty easy for me. Nice and clean. I, I heard you mention uh, you're playing with your brothers and you ended up in goals. Yeah. Um, that was me. I had to do the same thing. I got four. I got, <laughs> had no choice, huh? One of five boys. I got four brothers, and uh, I'm the youngest. And there was no option. They threw me in the goals because they can just yeah. kick balls at me and make me chase balls. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, but at the end, at the end, it was good for me. I really, I really fell in love with the position, and it's a pretty specific position. Like yeah. football is a yeah. team sport, yeah. and still we are the only individuals in the team. And how they say the old goalkeepers are normal, they wouldn't drew the line where they can operate like 18 yard box so you know you need to have a bit of craziness craziness inside of you to be a goalkeeper yeah no, that, we've heard that often from a lot of goalkeepers there has to be a little bit of craziness there um but um let's talk about how you broke into the um senior um senior uh, i guess team firstly at dinamo zagreb and then you lined out straight away to lokomotiva zagreb um, now, Lokomotiva, interestingly, has got an Australian-Croatian connection. I think the football director yeah, there is still yeah, Dennis yeah. Goodison. Dennis, yes, From yes, Geelong, yes. yep. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting. Now, what was that like? Because we've heard a lot about Lokomotiva. That's, you know, to Dinamo Filiala um, and what you're not. But it's also a, a real good, um, I guess, a, 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 we see with the current captain, Lukas Kachavenda, yeah. who's what, yeah. won. And he's knocked back a seven million dollar, seven million euro offer yes. from I think it was Genoa. It's yeah. a real good um, uh, incubator, isn't it, of of good young talent? And what's the trick there? Is it because they give the young players a go? What what why is Lokomotiva so successful at producing good young players? Yeah, so basically, I started like to to train with the first team of Dynamo with 16 and a half, 17 years old. And then soon I debuted in a, I made a debut in a cup game. And after that, I was like um, second goalkeeper, supporting always the older goalkeepers. And then it was who the, time Who for, were the main goalkeepers then, sorry? Uh, it was, uh, first of all, was uh, uh, Ivan Turina, Marco mm -hmm. Sharlia. And after, uh, uh, Filip Loncharic was also there. So after, after came Georg Koch and uh, Tomislav Butina. So after I had uh, like, it, it was time for me to, to get some like proper senior, senior uh, football minutes. And so we agreed for me, it's the best move to go on loan for Locomot uh, to Locomotiva. Mm -hmm. And 
they they didn't start that season pretty good because I came like after after I was started fourth round yeah after three rounds I came there so I did my one week with them and I started playing and we had a mix of uh, really like highly experienced experienced players and a good mixture of of young players who who had that hunger in inside of them inside of them who wanted to to succeed to prove that uh, their place is in in Dinamo and they trusted us we we finished it was still i think a uh, league of 16 teams so first season we uh, my first and only season there finished uh, we finished eight and it was really good experience because i got that i got that 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 senior senior minutes football which is the most important for development of the of the young players and yeah, and after that, uh, Vahid Halilhojic came as a coach of Dinamo Zagreb, and he he called me he called me back, and that's how I started again with with Dinamo. Now you made it to uh, the European Champions League. Um, tell us the experiences that you you had there, because I think it was uh, was it in the in, in the um, Champions League playoff in I'm reading here was it against Malmo where you Mal saved yeah. a crucial save? Yeah, it was. Like this was the first time after 12 years that Dinamo qualified for the, the we qualified mm -hmm. my team uh, for the Champions League. And it was uh, unbelievable, like to be a part of the biggest uh, club uh, competition in the world, mm -hmm. respect to everybody that but the Champions League, it's for me, it's the biggest. It was amazing. Yeah, we had a bit of stressful game against Malmo. It was two, two legs games. Uh, First one we won pretty easily, but there some things didn't went well for us. But at the end, we we fought hard, and at the end, the the saves aren't product of myself. It's like the whole team achieved the the result, and yeah, we qualified. In my we qualified for two straight uh, Champions League uh, seasons. Yeah, and then I moved over to to Italy. Even a. When you um, had that experience uh, and you have a bit of a reflection about what that was like, did, did your mind ever drift back to those early days as a kid with your brothers in the yard, kicking a ball and going, "Od kut sam došao, gdje sam stiga? Yeah, it's, it's always like nice reflection because you know how much your 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 parents, your family, they, they give everything for you, like they sacrifice a lot just for their kid to be happy and then at one moment you succeed like you become part of this crazy professional football world and it's amazing and i always look my mom she has all those uh, photo books of all, all the articles since i was eight and until uh, probably now even though today it's a bit more interesting she, she is not so good with it yeah, yeah. and it, and, and it really, sort of it really emphasizes sorry. how when, when someone in the family, and it might be just sometimes just one person, it might be multiple people in the family, but really emphasizes that the entire journey is not just about you, the athlete, it's everyone around you. And, and everyone comes along that journey, hence why you know, your mum's picking up photos and yeah. everyone's coming along the, the ride with you. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like I got married when I was 22 years old and also my, my oh, wife, uh, she's crucial part. She's watching now in Croatia live. Yeah. So you need, so you know uh -huh. that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, obviously. Say hello to it. Pusa, you worry. Pusa, you worry. That's why I couldn't be with you last week. I was uh, I was uh, driving them to the airport. Yeah, so. that's okay. It's better you're with your wife than you're with your sip and myself. Oh, I mean, we are <laughs> we are handsome roos roosters, but not that you know we're handsome mate, enough. Yeah. Mate, mate, you are not bad company. Eh? Trust me. Yeah. You are alone. Yeah. You are not a bad company. <laughs> Thank you. Thank now, even you. actually, look, you, you, you mentioned a really good thing. So you, you got to Dinamo Zagreb when you're 16. You got married at 22. Jeez, you've lived your life by the age of 22. Yeah. How, if, in, in, in Zagreb, you're, you're, you're a superstar, but you're only a young bloke. How yeah. easy is it to get carried away with all the fame and the fortune and the glory? And who, who was the ones that, that most kept you down to earth? Because Josip, talking to this man, he's very down to earth, isn't he? Um, yeah. Was it your was it your friends from no, the old? Why the fans love him. That's right. Was it the friends from the old Kvart? Was it your what? Was it your new young wife? Was it the family who managed to keep you kind of grounded a little bit? And how important oh, was it? Hundred percent, my wife. She's like, 
she's answer. my guy to she's she's my guy to everything i uh, really i think i i wouldn't achieve a lot of things without her without her support and like we have now now three beautiful daughters and when they were here when uh when i was able to to bring them on the pitch it was unbelievable and then mm-hmm. also when you have that reflection i couldn't even i couldn't even imagine that and that i would i would share that moment after a victory to have my my kids on a pitch with me in, in front of the best supporters in Australia, which is our fans, and they were chanting my name. Kids were amazed and like that's all credit. Long yeah, long answer short, long answer short, my wife. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Hey, um now I think we can dive straight into the the fan situation here, even yeah. um we have noticed almost immediately the fans have embraced you as as if you've been here since you were born. And, um, and you've wasted no time grabbing the bullhorn after the games and getting involved in the sing-alongs. Give us a little bit of a reflection of your, you know, when you first came to Australia, did, you, did it meet your expectations? Did you have any expectations? And then how did this sort of relationship with the fans come about? Yeah, look, uh, I was well aware where I'm coming, to which club, that this is the, the best club in the, in the A-League with the biggest supporters, the best supporters. And from the day one, they like accepted me with the open hands. And I'm like, I'm like that. I'm chatty. I like to joke. I, they, some, my, my teammates, they call me even funny. I don't know if it's that true, but you know, and, but most of all, I will do my hundred percent. I will work every day to be a better teammate, to be a better goalkeeper, to be a better person. And I don't know, probably that's why they embraced me and yeah, with Bullhorn, it wasn't I, it wasn't me that I was looking for it. They, they, they call my name. I didn't even figure it out. But then my good old uh, Lee Broxham, he said, hey, they're calling for you. So I went over there. Yeah. They gave me the Bullhorn and then they explained me what I need to do. And it's, uh, it's a tradition since then. Oh. Now, now, you Ivan, that sort of sorry. Sorry, Tonch, are you that sort of supporter as well? When you watch football, are you parochial, spirited, passionate, or do you watch with a bit of intensity? Uh, I'm everything. I'm everything. <laughs> like, I I try to see things, but when my team is playing, I'm just one of the one of the supporters. And yeah, that's important. Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty intense. Pretty intense. Now, Ivan, um, as we mentioned at, at Melbourne Victory, there's a very strong Croatian flavour there. You've got Johnny Didulica, the football manager. You've got the coach, Tony Popovic. Then you've got the players, left, right and centre. We yeah. saw Luka Prusha joined up recently. We also had, um, we've got Matej yeah. Spiranovic from Geelong, young Anthony yeah. Leban as well, yeah. um, even though some of the uh, commentators in the FFA Cup made it sound like he was French, Leban. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> or Leban, Leban. Leban, yeah. 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 Now, now, is it true, am I told that Jay Barnett, his mum, mum is yeah. Croatian yeah. as well? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, so for those of you that didn't know, so uh, now how with with so many Croatians all of a sudden, um, what what's the what's the dressing room banter like? You know, after a game when you win, do you you know do you have you know Lier Palisi or Volin Piti or something like that in the dressing rooms? <laughs> uh, still, still not, still not. But, but but we will overtake. So we have like our certain playlist, but banter in dressing room it, it's good. Like it's it's really good. With all the like Croatian blokes and with the yeah. with the boss with with JD, and but also the, the rest of the guys they are following us. Uh, every morning when I when I yeah. come, obviously I come first always every morning. But when the guys are start to showing up, Disi Brate, what's up, brother? How you yeah, doing? Yeah. How Kako si? Good, good, dobro, dobro. Right. So yeah, yeah they, they they like they picked up a bit of bit of Croatian things. Now, we're going to have a member of the Golden Generation joining us a little bit later on, Scott McDonald, um, who, who um, is the, now the coach of the Gold yep. Coast Knights. Now, we're going to have to ask him, Josip, I don't know if this is true. I, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm, it's a legendary story that when, when Australia qualified for the 2006 World Cup by beating Uruguay, there is a, a rumour that Jelko Kalats was leading the singing in the dressing room afterwards and had all the players, including the non-Croatian players, remember there's about six players of Croatian extraction, all singing Volin Pity in the Socceroos <laughs> dressing room. <laughs> We're going to have to ask uh, Scott McDonald. We'll so here we're coming on. on that. 
I, 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 wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, uh, speaking of Gilles Kokalats, he is now coaching NK Urania in basketball, which is a third division side in Croatia. Uh, even though there's a lot of um, Australian Croatians now starting to move to, to Croatia and play either in the first division, second or third division. Um, you have made that switch from Croatia to Australia. You can see the two, uh, yeah. you can compare the two um, styles and the two environments. Can you see a lot more young Croatian Australians or Australian Croatians making that move? And, uh, and uh, is it a good thing for both um, Croatian football and Australian football? Yeah, of course it's it's a good it's a good move for 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 both parties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. because yeah. you 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 have uh like here in Australia there is a lot of talented football players, but what I think they miss the most is that like European mentality of competition. Like everything is hard earned, not given. You know, you need to you need to fight for every opportunity. Football there is a way of a way of living, like your way to succeed, to to crawl yeah. out of the swamp. And and w when they pick up that mentality, it will be, be become so much so much easier for them because you know, everybody idolizes maybe Europe, but it's also not so so beautiful, pinky and nice nice weather. Or how how could I say it? But like it will uh, surely help them improve their our mentality yeah mentality because that's i where i see the biggest difference is that mentality because here like in in victory we have very turn, talented young players we have great fix facilities and like in some like lower divisions in croatia you don't have that you don't have that so you need to work hard you need to to overcome some things and that's just but you need to look at like one obstacle on your way that's how we all how we all did it and that's how we made something out of the career now you did mention that that it's 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 for it's a way of living it's for a lot of play like a lot of young players it's a way out of poverty it's, it's a way to you know um um secure not only your future but that of your maybe your, your family your immediate family maybe the whole cell or maybe the whole village yeah, yeah is there a difference between kids that are born in say urban areas like say zagreb split rieka osik or those kids that come from villages or from you know really rural areas um like that determination that desire to succeed have you found any difference in the mentality of those kids coming to the big smoke and you know trying to secure a future there is always some maybe examples but i couldn't say like i'm i i, I was born and I, will, I, will, I was living 10 minutes from center of the zagreb so basically i was in, in a good area but still for me football was uh, football was everything you know how we say like god family football mm. and and this is how we like i don't know how to explain it it's just way of living uh, uh, you know you you want to like sacrifice everything for 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 the success of, of career because how you you say like for a lot of people it's a uh, it's a way out of the poverty or uh, like trying to improve and it's like also it's the best it's the best job in the world being a fo professional football player like you don't you need to work but you don't, you don't have like you don't work from eight to four mm. so you have your your part of the day you work hard but then after you go home like what football brought to me football brought to me i went i traveled all around the europe i tra travel all around the world met so many beautiful people uh, amazing people and like had some established some friendships that that they are still holding and everything because of the football so yeah football i think there is in europe it's more like like re religion mm. uh Ivane, um you, you've now uh well entrenched into the uh, f fabric of Melbourne victory. Um, what sort of contract terms have you got on? Are you staying in for a couple of years? Uh, and how, do you, how are you seeing that at the moment? Do you, feel, do you feel like you're going to be hanging around for a little while for the fans to enjoy your company? <laughs> yeah, I signed a two year contract. So Good. yeah, this is my first six months here. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is my family, obviously, but you know, kids are going to school. Uh, wife is having her her business there so you know we, we we made it i came mostly because of the boss wanted me and mm -hmm. it was a it was a 
amazing opportunity for me in, in my stage of career to play still because I don't like underestimate it. I didn't underestimate A League never like because uh, people have a wrong opinion on A League. But we train like with 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 Tony we train like I never trained before. It's so professional. He for me is the best coach uh, I could say best coach ever that 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 he, uh, that was coaching me and I enjoy every day being being with him and listening to him because you learn every day. If you don't want to learn every day, you you cannot mm. uh, you cannot improve and with him every day is about learning something new, improve you as a person, improve you as a player and that's what uh, it, that's what it's it's about. Yeah. Now you do talk about Tony Popovich, and we also mentioned Jelko Kalats, and you've got yes, very good right. experience with both of these. Um, yeah. um, uh, in Greece at Zanthi before yeah. you came here, um, it was only a short stint, but um, you had enough of a chance to, I guess, taste that Greek football. Um, overnight, we find another Croatian um, coach, Zoran Vulic, yeah. ex Heidel legend, has now taken the reins of Xanthi. What can he expect there? I mean, it's, a, it's Greek football, from all accounts, is a very passionate cauldron of football and the fans um xanthi are in the second division uh, what what can what was your experience like of um uh, football in greece oh first month and a half while i was with uh with the spider uh with jelko and with with boss it was unbelievable we had good results uh we started to establish our, our our way of football and then something happened nobody still knows why the uh, boss got sacked and after that everything went like down and mm -hmm. Greek Greek football especially second division it's very difficult very complicated mm -hmm. you are not playing just against 11 players on the pitch you are playing against oh, in between <laughs> your in between your team in between other team in between yeah. referees in between let's just say that it's not 11 v 11 yeah yeah there's a lot there. Uh, There's a lot yeah. there. So it's very right. complicated, and especially now second division because I still have some some friends there. We speak, yeah. we chat. They split the second division into two divisions, so this year it will be even harder. Only first team goes to the qualifiers against other team, and then oh, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. I hope I hope uh, Zoran will do will do good, but uh, of course for European people it's easier to especially from with our mentality it is, it's easier to adjust on those things you know when everything yeah. is not clean but yeah. he has a lot of experience as a coach he's a great coach he never coached me but i heard a lot of good things about him and i wish him nothing but success Ivan, it was an absolute pleasure having you. And we could talk, I reckon, for another hour easily. There's so much to talk about. But we really enjoyed having you on. And I'm sure all the viewers and fans did as well. We'll, we'll have to definitely get you back on the show. Uh, in the meantime, all the very best for, the, um, for, for the, um, the upcoming FFA Cup final this weekend um, against Central Coast. That's down in Melbourne. And, um, yeah, wishing you all the very best. And, uh, like I said, um, we'd love to have you on the show again sometime in the future. Thank the you, Lars. Here, it was a, thank you, Lars. It was an absolute blaster being with you. And whenever yeah. you, you want to have a little chat and so I can enjoy your, your company, then I'm all about it. No, no problems. No problems for all me. All right. No I worries, then. I give you. Have, have a good one. Have a good one. Luck on it. Bye-bye. That was uh, Ivan Kelava from um, from Melbourne Victory, and geez, he's a, he's, a, he's a very entertaining person, mate. You can you can definitely see why he's a fan favourite. Isn't that right? Yeah, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah.